Worldly is a term whose definition is controversial among Christians. It differs from person to person and is easy to quarrel over or to abuse. Our own personal opinions or church traditions are not the standard against which all things may be judged and decided to be worldly or orthodox, or acceptable to God or not. When it comes to defining what is of the world and what is not, we must have something to compare what we are judging against. For this we have two things, the scriptures and our personal knowledge of God and what he is like and approves, and vice versa, which knowledge comes from the Holy Spirit and increases with God's renewing of our minds. The more of that spiritual knowledge we have, the more discerning we are when it comes to judging what is pleasing and acceptable to God and what is of his spirit and what is not. What we determine to be worldly is directly related to our understanding of God himself. The better we understand what he is like, and the more like his own mind our minds become, the better we can discern what is of the world and what is of God. It's more than a matter of knowing what the scriptures say or don't say about our particular subject and basing our judgments on that. Although knowing what the scriptures teach is fundamental for knowing what God is like and what honors and pleases him or does not. There are more things that the scriptures do not address specifically than what they do. And we could assume that the silence or vagueness of the scriptures about a particular subject means that God doesn't care about it and that we can do whatever feels right to us in the matter. But that would be a foolish assumption on our part. God cares very much about everything we do and about how we represent him on earth. And faith, which requires God-given discernment, is as much a law to us as what is written. The knowledge of God's will for us and of his approval or disapproval of things. That's different than just having an opinion or a personal bias for or against something. True God-given discernment is living according to the very mind of God, by the enlightenment and convictions of his Holy Spirit, without which it is impossible for us to live effectively as Christians and which understanding is objective, differing from Christian to Christian only in the amount of it that we possess. The Bible alone is not enough. God doesn't live between the pages of his written word. His written word points us to him in life and teaches us about his mind and his ways so that we can know them and extend that knowledge to all things as his spirit interprets that word and communicates with our spirits, directing and convicting us according to that same knowledge. The Bible provides us with the truths about God, which help us to know him better and what his will is. But faith is not limited to only what the scriptures address. Rather, the scriptures teach us how to live by faith so that we can discern God's will about all things, not just what is written. So worldliness is what comes from and is of the spirits of the godless world and the nature of unregenerate man. Of the world doesn't necessarily refer to things that are commonly used by or done by human beings, either by nature or by culture. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. The spirit of Jesus makes known to the Christian what is and what is not, as do the scriptures. There is a worldliness that is immodest, hedonistic, and irreverent, and there is also worldliness that is religious. We shouldn't assume that Christians who are more outwardly conservative in appearance are necessarily more Christ-like in mind. An unchrist-like mind results in worldly attitudes and behaviors, whether they be obvious or obscured by a religious appearance and rituals and traditions. If it doesn't come from the Spirit of God, or please and honor him in truth, it's of the world, and therefore worldly as opposed to godly. Paul makes no distinction between religious worldliness and sensual worldliness when he writes in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 3, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, 
and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. We all begin our Christian life worldly because we all start out in the world, regardless of whether our upbringing or environment is Christian or not. And we all have to grow in godliness through the renewal of our minds by being obedient to the knowledge of God's will that he gives us and which he increases to us as we use the same. Carnality is thinking and acting according to the attitudes and desires of the sinful nature. And worldliness is the way in which carnally minded individuals live in the world. If you want to know what worldliness is, you have to know what godliness is. And if you want to know what godliness is, you have to know what God is like and what pleases and honors him, and what he is not like and what does not please or honor him. Godliness does not have a uniform appearance, neither does worldliness. But both are discernible by the spiritually mature Christian, whose mind God has renewed to be more like his own. With that renewal comes increasing discernment, and with discernment, increasing godliness. So rather than debating what is or isn't worldly, we would do much better as Christians to strive to be godly by getting to know God better, and to seek to honor him and to reflect him in all of his ways with every facet of our being, every day, more and more. The pursuit of godliness is the antidote to worldliness in all of its forms.